Peace, peace. How y'all doing? I am your boy Ro Jogan. This is Dope Boy Television. And this is the Everybody's Got One podcast, episode number five. Yes, sir. So uh, glad y'all checking in. You know, stay tuned in with us, man. Uh, had a, some wild, wild events and some crazy stuff happened since last time. You know, you've seen us. Uh, you know, we had, let me see what we had. Uh, the BMF, an episode of BMF came out. More, more, more BMF. You know, we always going to support BMF. Shout out to Four yeah, Eyes. Yeah, they're still casting right now. Yeah, they were casting know, yesterday. Four Eyes got music on BMF, so check out BMF. Shout out to Four. BMF on Stars. Then, uh... What else happened? X Men '97. All my 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 comic fans, my you know my Marvel fans. X Men '97 dropped. I ain't know that. So one. yeah, please check. It. Hey, once again, <laughs> check that out. X Men '97. That's crazy. Uh, what the Oscars? Well, you know, since last time we, we saw you, the Oscars. But you know, nobody really cares about the Oscars. Uh, let's see here. Um, if anybody, uh, any martial arts fans, you know, we got a new show uh, on FX called Shogun. Yeah. Check that out, bro. That shit's crazy. It's called Shogun. It's crazy. Then uh, you gotta be old school to know who the Shogun is. Yeah, man. Then uh, the remake of Row House just came out. What? Yeah, man. So you know, we on a like, on a little TV shit. That, you know, this just have you seen it this or episode. No? It, it just came out today. Oh, so Row House just dropped. So Row House, uh, it be lit like the first one. No, nah, fuck that. <laughs> it, it's, it could never be the first. The it can first never be the House first one. It's one of the best movies ever made. Shout out to my homie White Jesus. Shout out Four Eyes, shout out my homie E, Roll House, first Roll House, one of the best movies ever made. Please watch it if you've never seen it. Um, yeah, man, what, what, what you been on, man? You had some crazy stuff happening to you the last time, you know, since the last time we saw you, man, what's been going on with you? I went to the uh, country country rap tunes launch with Corey Moe, it was great. Shout out yeah, to Corey uh, Moe, shout out to Corey Moe, okay. Got the recap out, got to, inter got to interview Corey Moe, got to interview Kimberly Latrice Jones, activist, big time activist nice, in Black man. Lives Matter and... Where can they see that at? On our, on our YouTube, ain't that Hey, we'll check it out. Make sure you, you know, make sure you, that be right make sure you looking at other videos on Doughboy Television Worldwide on yeah. YouTube. You know, he has it's all, other it's all one house. Check that out, One too. umbrella. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. What else you had going? You got some other stuff going too, right? I worked with uh, Blue Pill, Red Pill, Phil Moreland, uh, Paul Moreland. Uh, shot a video for them at uh, Industry nice. uh, Studios Atlanta. That's good shit. Yeah, yeah, good shit. With uh, got to sit down with 19 keys, hey. and a content house with a mansion. All know? our conscious people I out mean, there, you damn, know, 19 I mean, keys. That's, that's about that's about big as it gets right Real now. Shit. I'm working on that right Real now. Shit. I need to really hey. get on that. Hey, hey. But yeah, hey. yeah. I mean, that was. Are you feeling divine old? intervention, my brother? You feeling old? I'm feeling old. I feel a little old. Feel my like knees old? feel old sometimes. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like I'm getting old. <laughs> I, I, I kind of gained my weight a little back, but I mean, I'm still I'm for, I'm forty some, but I mean, forty is the new thirty if you start eating vegan and you know. Hey, I'm trying to get to that. Definitely uh, eat, you know, eat right. I stopped eating meat, uh, you know, recently. So if you're not eating right, you know, try to eat right. Drink water. Drink more water. Work yeah, out. I've been drinking exercise. more water. You know, we try to. If, if I can say anything motivational, I'll say it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and we ain't. I'm not working out five times a week, but you know we trying to get a little working out, trying to eat right, do something. So we just if we can say it. It's about you hearing it and then doing it. Doing it. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm feel like I'm getting old. Oh shit! Cause why? Cause you saw the freak Nick. Oh uh, no! I ain't I, not. They didn't night. I ain't see the whole thing. But I mean, we used to we used to listen to pimps, bro. Now we listen I mean, we listen to hoes now. So I mean, I know I'm getting shake old. that asshole. I know I'm getting old. Cause I mean, sexy red. I feel like Sexy Red has taken over. When you go out to it, like a bar or a club, you, you're going to hear Sexy Red like the majority of the night. Or you're going to hear. Well, me. I almost forgot to tell you, I shot at um, Ace Atlanta with a London artist. See, my my Elliot and that's all it was short and all it, it was all sexy read it up. I ain't even going to lie. I start filming right away because yep. the club just damn near went sideways. Mm -hmm. So pretty much. Artists like Sexy Red or Sexy Red in particular, um, clearly she has a she has a boss, she has a A and R, she has people who are above her or help her with what she's doing. So it's people always come down on the artist, but it is an actual machine behind her, pumping her, putting her in in, in the position that she's in, putting it very for her quick. to influence and have so much you know um, content out, which then dominates the radio and her energy ends up dominating. 
And then little kids she are in just, school. just like took over Ice Spice. Really yeah, cool. I mean, once again, Ice Spice. Ice Spice was on fire. Then it's like sexy red. It's like what the top of the exactly. cover of Rolling Stone already. It's like Ice Spice was trying to rap a little bit too much and be too lyrical and be too East Coast, too New York. Then she wasn't she wasn't saying her booty hoes brown. So then after after she said her booty hoes brown, the camera just turned this way. <laughs> like who? Ice Spice who? They just turned and looked at sexy red. Like and she just now she just dominates because she said the most. Ignorant. <laughs> she said the most ignorant things, and she looks. And the hell, she looks. She don't even look good. So once again, Ice Spice looks way better than Sexy Red. So if we were gonna concentrate on somebody, it should still be Ice Spice, even though her message is not any better per se. But she just still hasn't said the things. Straight so I mean, so, for real, think about it. Think, think about it. Crazy, right? I mean, so, we, we had Luke and shit back in the day in Two yes, Life Crew, but yes. it was like in the house, you couldn't, you had to hide the shit. Yes. Once again. My mom heard me sing, listening to something, she grabbed the shit and took it. So it was like, now it's like the little kids are singing it. Yeah. Your mom didn't, didn't say, hey, I got two, I got two Life Crew like, for you. Cow. Come, come dance for me and, and put, it, put, put it on hit. and you dance. She, 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 your mom didn't want you to dance to Two Life Crew for no, her. I couldn't play none of that shit. So, yeah, <laughs> like the whole, yeah, it's just, where we at now is just bad. What so, was that video you showed me right now with the little kids and singing? Oh yeah, like I mean six years old, seven years old. Shout out to my homie E. Uh, you know he sent me sent me this uh, video. I guess somebody had put it together on YouTube, and they they they, they just put together this the uh, well, I guess maybe fifteen minute video, and it just makes so much sense of how her energy and what she puts out, and just it just, it just showed the domino effect of it, and it's like little kids. At ba in, in a ballet dance lesson that their parents pay for, don't want to dance to ballet music. They want to dance to Sexy Red. Like, that's a problem. Like, that has to be an issue where it's like, it has to be something deeper than, it has to be, it, it's more than just the music or the melody or something that, that that's actually getting to these kids where it's like, it, 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 is there a brainwashing in music or a brainwashing in hip hop, do you think? Do you think there is something they say deeper? Gangster rap like, is an agenda. Like no, I mean like in no, some, there's something like like a cult, a cult in the music. Like when you hear the melody, or like, like when you chant something over and over again, do you think there's some occult in it? Yeah, because that'd be cleaning the house, singing "Shake That Ass." Holy, <laughs> I didn't even know it. I caught myself listening to it in the car because it's got bass. I was like, hmm. Yeah, see, nah, see, it, it'd be even deeper if it went to a different level where you, we, you didn't realize that "Sexy Red" is actually. It, the, it's, it's like some demonic spirit stuff that's that's coming out when when the songs play. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it'd be crazy where it, it's taking over little kids. Cause I mean, I'm seeing videos of little kids dancing, little kids going crazy, they little know kids the saying, more than I little kids just saying booty hole brown, booty hole brown. That, that's, that's all they want to hear. Like they don't they don't just like but they just something something got to them kids. That energy got to them kids. Man. So I mean. Sexy Red gets blamed for it, but we gotta start looking at the people who actually support Sexy Red. But the parents too. So it's, 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 it's the black women supporting Sexy Red because think about this: if if five hundred thousand black women came out and said, "Cut that booty hole brown shit off," it'll never get played again. If if they all sat down in the club when the song came on, it when the song came on and they all sat down, it'll never get played again. But they all get up and turn up and, and, and get hyper. So it's like it clearly lets everybody know that. This is what they enjoy. Well, if no one's telling you no, no. I mean, so so no. Why do they enjoy it though? So it's like that energy. So like it it, it turns like into like is is it the we we've, we've we were so masculine for so many years that this now that this this feminine energy that they putting out because now she like a fucking Luther Campbell. She's like she's like Luther Campbell now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So think, so think about what, where the world is. Well, well when, she got when, it free. When I was young, I listened to we listened to A Ball MJG and, and people talk about pimps and then and, and the hoes never got talked about. Hoes never got to say say nothing. So now think about this: this the hoes in the back now come, coming from back the back like booty hole brown, booty hole brown. She just want to say something. She just want yeah. she want to say something. She want to just, just just so it's like now well, we, the marketing we, scheme works. So so now we listening to hoes. We, we went from listening to pimps to listening to hoes. And they're more masculine now than the men. But so, but I'm saying <laughs> so. Think about this: if we if we if the last thirty years of culture was was men listening to pimps, and that's how we got to the Me Too movement and Harvey Weinstein and all that shit. But and even but even you go a step a step beyond that. The casting couch in Hollywood has been the casting couch in Hollywood since, since before hip hop. Since before hip hop was ever invented. So it's like where it started. So it's levels to all of this shit. And we just now caught in this one level, and now we gotta fight our way out of this and try to get out of this 
But understand that we have to look backwards and say, where do we come from? And then, and then figure out we came from this, and now we don't want to we don't want to stay here. We want to we want to get here. So how do we excel and get out of this? And I feel like once again, um, we we need female strong artists to come out and 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 and, and say, this is not this is not all it is. It's not just Ice Spice and it's not just fucking sexy red and in the independent lane at least because so you know, you know the powers that be ain't gonna let nothing nothing go through like that i guess right now i mean yeah man it's just it's just, crazy, just sell man. def jam 2 again or some shit this is crazy shit going once on. again and everybody that one like two three people own everything so. i sat and listened to white man who was a millionaire who runs a company for two, over 20 years in hip-hop named leo cohen Look right into the camera and says that he has to feed his, his family, which means he don't care what the artist puts out. And said it like, well, I mean, that's that's what it is. Like, like he my, literally like does not care because he don't ha he doesn't live in those communities. He don't, he don't have he don't have to walk those blocks. He don't have to do none of that shit. So he don't give a fuck about none of those kids who end up having to run and duck from bullets from artists that he that 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 literally put out drill music and want to kill you and. Shoot you and ride on you and slide on you and big steppers and all this. He don't care about none of that shit. So being from Chicago, and I thank God I, my mother moved from the West Side to Oak Park, which turned into Smoke Park because all we did was sit and smoke weed because we weren't finna go do all that shit. bullshit. Oak Park is the West Side. So shit. once again, we, all you do is cross the street. So she tried to move. She, my mom, my mom tried to move us in it the safety. It was better, but she tried to move us in the safety. Now it's probably the same as that shit. My mom tried to move us in the safety, but literally where we lived, if you just cross the street, you're back in the danger zone. Madison. So Avenue. that's literally what it was. But so now, um, once again, how do we get out of where we are now? If if all we have is executives who want to put out. Feed they, all they want to do is feed their family, which means they're going to sign the next young, hungry black kid who wants to make some money and feed his family. So it's like there's no... And if you're growing up in the hood and you anybody even gives you a taste of money, you're going to fuck around and just take it because you're tired of struggling. It's like almost strategically done. And then, they, and then you I know... Mean, it is to treat strategically done. Hip-hop is about keeping it real. You got to keep it real. So now you got kids who trying to keep it real, rapping about what they see. And what they and what they they, they 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 come from it, but they don't really they don't really live it. You know what I'm saying? So now they have to they trying to keep it real and talk about what they see, and now they don't really don't live that life, and now they stuck in a lane that puts them in danger, and that's that's where you got young rappers getting killed, killing each other. Well, Kill now they gotta they gotta live up to the image that they created. Exactly. You mean uh, King Von? How many young young rappers? Died. King Von was really killing. Who actually met? Yeah, he was killing. King Von. But I'm saying, well, we don't. Beat, like, what's the game? Murders. That's all, how. You, that's how that, I was Chicago. I went to the county one time with dudes like, I just gotta beat these four murders and I'll be out. <laughs> all of that still allegedly, <laughs> but all it comes down to is, once again, it's a. But you know, you know how King Von became King Von. If you get into that, once again, there, there was guns in the place that, that that he didn't bring no guns to the South Side of Chicago. Guns was already there to well, be. They drop to them be, off it with crates. Yeah, to be bought illegally. More than one time I've heard. People say I went outside and there was a crate of guns with automatic shit and bullets just all there with, with everything. Exactly. What would that one dude say? I thought I went to the I went to the gun store and said, "Let me get that that brow." You know what I'm saying? They're looking at him like, "But we don't sell automatic weapons." He said, "I thought that's how guns shoot." <laughs> <laughs> How did that did it now get on the street if yeah. they don't sell it? That means so they just didn't know nigga from from 59th get a boat and bring it in. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, it's time to bring Mr. Mudknock in. It. All right, yeah, we can uh we can holler at Mr. Mud man. Mud bring, bring Mr. Mudknock in, man. Uh, got a couple questions about. Uh, some stuff going on. Hey, how you doing? Good sir. Good sir. How you doing, my uh, brother? Pretty good. Yourself? All right. Mr. This is Mr. Mudlock. For anybody who does not know Mudlock Studios, if you need any kind of mixing, mastering, recording, anything to be done in on that lane or that realm of your business in the music industry, he can help you out and take your music to the next level. Certainly, Mudlock Studios. Google it. M U D N O C. Everybody else just that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, my question, because, you know, you've been in Atlanta for how long now? I uh, moved here September 9th, 1993. Great, perfect. So then, because the, the Freaknik documentary just dropped, and in 93 I was 13 years old, 
So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to go to, to Freaknik anyways. So do you have any experiences of Freaknik you, you want to tell? Or how was Freaknik to you? Because you came from Kentucky to Atlanta. Right. So how, how was it, it you experiencing the Freaknik uh, time of the year being down here when it was popping for real? Uh, I mean, it was crazy. But well, first of all, I mean, again, coming from Kentucky, Atlanta's crazy. Uh, <laughs> just, I mean, uh, a town, entertainment, something's always going on, the clubs, uh, and just seeing, I mean, we had a black mayor. I mean, just the mm. stuff that I wasn't, it was foreign to me. <laughs> but as far as Freaknik, um, yeah, because all my, all my friends came down, and it, my wife hates when I say it was the best time I've ever had in my life, right? <laughs> But it was. I mean, it I, it wasn't like I was doing anything crazy, but just being out, in it, you know, in it. That's it, real. Just trying to get downtown, and That's you can't real. even get downtown. Uh, the downtown connector, people outside their cars, just, uh, you know, females showing their breasts, the music blasting, people dancing. Wow, um, sound, sounds great. It was, it, again, it was the best time of my life. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. I do look forward to, to, to seeing the, the documentary just to... to but... I mean, like I said, I mean, and it went on for years, but um, I think, you know, uh, the other powers that be and, and the white business owners, because we weren't going to the malls. I mean, the party mm -hmm. was was the city. And if you've been to Atlanta, you know Atlanta's very spread out. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about a party from Windy Hill to Wesley Chapel. Okay. Um, that's a huge area, and just, you know, every street is just cars after cars, of course, Piedmont Park, all the places that, that people were trying to get to. It okay. was just one huge party that went on for four days and didn't want it to stop. But um, I remember in, in 96, I guess that's when the Olympics came, that's when they uh, they enacted the no cruising law, which mean a car could not go around a block and return. <laughs> so uh, they started giving tickets for that. They started blocking off exits. Like if you're trying to get off in the West End, couldn't. They are going to direct you where they wanted you to go. Mm. And um, eventually it died out. I would say, I think, um, 95, it was just weather. It, it rained the entire time. But Wow. Nah, freaking 94, best time of my life. Still had some, uh, <laughs> some other good years. <laughs> a married man. A married man says freaking was the best time of his life. That's, oh, that's great to hear. Yep. Oh, that's great to hear. All right, man. Well, pleasure, man. Like, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Still boy, Let's, you got any shout outs you want to give any You know what I do, man, I do. Yeah, I, like to I, give I got a shout some shout outs too, to man. America Sutton Music. All right. She's writing for all the big names and she's she helps put me out in a lot of places. I'd like to give a shout out to Corey Moe at the Country Rap Tunes. I'd like to give a shout out, shout out to all Chicago. I'd like to give a shout out to Four Eyes. I'd like to give a shout out to Ro Jogan. Hey. That's me. Uh, number two. Who else, who else, who else? We're gonna I shout out my man uh, Flute Lord. We're gonna talk yeah. to the Flute Lord. Uh, we're gonna shout out my homie E. We're gonna shout out my homie Tone. Let's see, uh, German Jackie. Always German Jackie. Uh, shout out Sandy. I love you, baby. Let's see, shout out my homie Pig, Hot Dog, C4, my homie Tim McDonald, uh, my homie Killer Ed, my homie Ed in the house, White Jesus, always White Jesus, Ryan, uh, and uh, it was just uh, German Jackie's daughter. Uh, birthday just passed. Shout out to Mia. Uh, let's see, it's, uh, who else, man? Uh, Brooklyn, Big Rob, Brooklyn. Rest in peace, Big Steve. Yes, uh, sir. Always shout out to Mudknock, Four Eyes. Uh, let's see here, man. My homie P1, my homie Megaton, uh, Chevy Broham. Shit, let me see, man. Let me see, you know, uh, oh, my homie Fish, man. Maywood, my homie in the woods, Fish. OJ, Naps, they, they try to close Naps. Shout out to my homie OJ, Naps, everybody in Naps. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, rest, you know, uh, rest in peace to everybody we lost. Uh, and thank y'all for checking us out, man. Uh, see y'all next time.